Hello, how's everybody doing? Well, it's that time of year, you know, where uh, software companies are putting out new upgrades and new features and functions. It's also, the, you know, it's the holiday season where we might end up getting a gift of new software or maybe some gift cards that we'll use to purchase new software. Some of that software can be used as a plugin within Lightroom, meaning that you can be editing a picture in Lightroom and you can launch a plugin that gives you extra enhancements and ability to make the picture a little nicer than using just the features of Lightroom. If we were going to launch a Lightroom plugin, we would right click on a picture, we choose edit in, and then we choose the plugin that we want to use. You can also do the very same thing by going up under photo, edit in, and choosing the Lightroom plugin so we can enhance our photograph. Now, when you install the software from like Nick, On One, Luminar, uh, these type of software, they will automatically install a plugin uh, that can is accessed through the edit in menu. Sometimes that doesn't happen. But no worries, it's very easy to add the, the plugin into Lightroom if it doesn't show up on the install by the manufacturer. You, the only thing that you really need to remember is when you install the software originally, just what directory is the executable file in. Once you know that, you are all set. So to start out with, we're going to install uh, a piece of software uh, from Nick called ColorFX5 that I've upgraded, but it didn't install the plugin. So we're going to install that now. And to do that, we're going to go into Lightroom Classic and choose Preferences. Now, if you're on a Windows machine, I think it's either under File or Edit, and you'll find the Preferences menu, but it'll take you to the same window here where you receive Preferences, and we want to choose External Editing Tab. Now, in that tab, the first window is basically how this is going to be edited by the plugin. And I usually choose TIFF. The other option is a PSD, which is a Photoshop file. Uh, there's really hardly any difference in quality. Uh, between TIFF and PSD, they store uh, layers and everything else like you would expect uh, a file from Photoshop or Lightroom. But I choose TIFF. The color space, I choose Pro Photo. Uh, again, you can choose any one of these. Most people will choose sRGB. Uh, our Adobe RGB, our Pro Photo, has a little uh, deeper color depth. Um, bit depth, uh, I choose 16 bits. Resolution, I choose 300. Just a little tip here, if you use Epson printers, they recommend that you set the resolution to 360. So if you're going to be printing using an Epson printer, be sure to set this at 360. The next window allows you to set up the new preset. Now right now we're on Luminar Neo, but that's not what we want to, to uh, install. So this is where it's a little confusing the first couple times you do it. But once you see it done, it kind of just clicks in and it's real easy to do. The first thing we have to be concerned about with is the application. So we need to come over here and choose. And we want to go in our applications or whatever folder it is in Windows where it stores your applications. And you want to find the executable for the plugin. Now you can see I have all my plugins and applications stored in the applications menu in on a Macintosh. And this is a Nick Collection uh, plugin and it's Color Effects Pro 5. So I'm going to click on the application, the execu executable, and choose choose. Now you can see it loads it in here under application Color Effects Pro 5. Let's go ahead and make sure that all our formatting is correct. I want it to be in TIFF. I want it to be in Pro Photo, 16 bits, 300 uh, DPI, no compression. So now we need to give this a title. And to do this, you're going to click on the drop down. You're going to choose Save Current Settings as a new preset. And we're going to give it a name. And we're going to call it exactly what the application is. Color Effects Pro 5. And we're going to create. All right. So now these match up. If we were to close down this window and right click and go to edit in, you would see there is Color Effects Pro 5. So any plugin that doesn't get installed automatically, it can be very easily installed as long as you know where the executable is. You just install it in your edit in menu. Now the next thing is what I do because uh, as you can see, these are all in alphabetical order. 
I don't like it to be in alphabetical order. I kind of like it in the order in which I use the most. Unfortunately, there's no way to sort this or display it in a different way. But let me show you a little shortcut that I use so that I can get it showing up the way I like. We go to the same place. We go to Preferences. We're going to choose the very first one that I use the most. And I use Topaz Sharpen AI the most. So I choose it in my preset. I'm going to select the drop down again and I'm going to choose Rename. When I rename it, I'm going to give it something that will put it at the top of the list. So I put 01 underscore. You could also use just A underscore and then Topaz and we're going to rename it. The next one that I use is Topaz Denoise. That's what I use just about as much as Sharpen. And then we're going to go to rename Topaz Denoise. I'm going to call this 02 underscore. The next one I use is Luminar Neo. I'm going to rename this one. Give this one a number three underscore. And then I use Baviza probably almost as much as a Luminar Neo. So remember, you just have to choose the one that you're looking for. We'll say uh, a Visa 3. And then you choose it again and rename it. I know it's kind of confusing at first, but you'll get the hang of it real quick. 04 underscore. And then the last one I use the most is this Color Effects Pro 5. So I select it. I select it again. Choose rename. 05 underscore rename. Now if we close this down and we right click and say edit in, you can see all the ones that I use the most are at the very top. One, two, three, four, five. And that way I don't have to go searching down here for wherever they are. Now when you launch a uh, plugin, it's going to um, create a new file. And remember we told it we wanted it to be a TIFF. So it's going to launch into the plugin as a TIFF file. And we're launching Sharpen. And uh, you would just make your changes to the file, you know, to sharpen it. Once you have all your changes made, you just hit Apply. It will then open up a new file in Lightroom uh, next to the original one that you launched with. So as you can see, we're down here. We're on 236. The original one we launched was 237. And you can see that it's now given it a new number. I've done this a couple times on the same picture, but it always increments it up. So uh, this was the one we launched from. This was uh, 270. Let me show you. If you look over here in the left-hand corner, at 69-270, we launched it to take it into uh, Sharpen, and we get 69271. So that's showing us that's the different one. And that's how we install and modify our Lightroom plugins. Now, just a little extra feature. I just wanted to show you something in uh, Luminar. I don't know if anybody uses it. It's a pretty decent raw editor. It has lots of features. Uh, it's more automated than Lightroom. So it has a lot of features they can do. And you can add extensions to it. And they came out with one this year called Magic Lights. And I just want to show you that one real quick. I'm not saying you need to buy it. You can go out to Luminar and, and look at it get for 14 days and give it a try. But it, it has some good features. And I just wanted to show you one to see how special it is. All right, here we are in Lightroom looking at a Christmas lit scene, and I'm going to launch the Luminar uh, plugin, which is like just like another editor like Lightroom. It's just got extra features to it. So I'm going to right click on the picture. We're going to go edit in, and we're going to choose Luminar Neo. And it's telling us we want to launch with Lightroom adjustments. I did make some adjustments to uh, lighting and contrast on here, and it's going to launch Luminar, and we want to go to edit. Once in edit, if, if you can see, it looks a lot like Lightroom. If we want to click develop, you know, we can change exposure and it has smart contrast that works pretty good. Highlights and shadows, just like Lightroom. It just presents it in a different way. But they have extensions. Uh, and these are extensions here. So it's noise reduction, AI sharpening, and it, but it has one called Magic Light that I think is pretty neat. So if we click Magic Light, it's going to bring up the, the panel for Magic Light and we can up the intensity it's going to look at a very pinpoint of light and it's going to put a little star on it so like if you were to take this picture at a very high aperture you could get these stars to appear 
but now we can make them appear without using a high aperture. And as you can see, as I increase the intensity, we get this effect. We can make the size bigger or smaller. We can make beam width bigger or smaller. We can make it glow more. We can make it clearer, which takes some of that glow off and makes the star effect look a little better. We can brighten it, make number of beams more. You can also, if you have a lower number of beams, you can rotate those beams around the way you like it. Anyway, this is just a plug-in uh, that I kind of found kind of neat uh, on Luminar. The software itself is pretty good. I'll admit, it is good if you're not uh, real comfortable with using Lightroom. Uh, Luminar does just about the same thing uh, in a little different fashions, but it's pretty easy to use. It's pretty reasonable. I think over the holidays it's going for like $79, but the Pro version uh, after the holidays would be $149, which is, includes all these extensions that you see here. Uh, anyway, that's it. If you have any questions on how to uh, use, install, or modify plugins, just give me a shout. I'll be glad to help you out. Talk to you later.